Hey everybody, today we have a Dell to look at. Uh, this was sent in by a college. This is a Dell 1650. And it seems that it also suffers from a similar problem to a lot of projectors that use this type of lamp. If the uh, connector is not pushed down all the way and that little thing locked into place, you end up with uh, burn connectors. It's a bad design, in my opinion. I see a lot of projectors where this happens. And I used to think it was a problem with the uh, lamp assembly, but it's not. It's just a poor design. There's the original. And you can see that one's locked in. I probably tried to uh, see if it would still work. But, hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, once those go, they go. That's the uh, the OEM super high hours. You can see inside the arc tube there that white. That's all the uh, I don't know what you call it deposits and whatnot from the arc points. The connector isn't super burned, but it's burned enough. Now I have a, uh, a replacement. Hopefully it's long enough. It should be. This is out of a... I forget what this is out of. An old Mitsubishi or something. But they're all kind of the same thing now. You know, there's only a handful of companies making projectors in the past, you know, 10 years or so. Anyway, let's take it apart first. This is a lot like an Optima. Oops. Has that kind of Optima look to it. I even think the, uh, let me see, what's that lamp number? Lamp assembly is a, I don't know. I'll put it up on the screen. I'll look it up after the fact. But it looks a lot like the uh, lamp assemblies that go in uh, a lot of modern projectors. Let's see, those three that we have. One. Two. Three. What happened to that mount? Oh, somebody wanted to put a screw next to the mount. Okay. Uh... do it I thought that maybe that front like all came up flat but it looks like it comes up here so that means there should be a clip See? Right there. Maybe I need to use two screwdrivers. I think once I get this started, it should just kind of pop apart. I don't have my spudger with me at the moment. It's at home. There we go. Yeah, big clip right there. There's really no way to get to it. That's weird. Usually you have like a, an access to the clip. I wonder about these, though. These might need to come out. Pardon me. Sometimes they have plastic that goes behind there. Let's see if... 
see if that changes anything. Nope. I'll probably put those back in then. I'll just keep this over here. should be able to okay I can see this clip right here there we are another one here 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 there we go Boy, that looks a lot like the back of the keypad inside that GT1080. I bet whoever made that GT1080 also made this. Looks a lot like a Optima inside. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that on the power supply. Probably not. Let's see. Right there, Cortronic. So this is basically an Optima, and that makes sense because of the uh, projector lamp. So the wire we need to change goes all the way over. Might need to be spliced. That's okay. We can do that. We're set up for that. Let's take this out. Pop that connector out. Now we get that vent out of the way. See if I have something I can pop those out with, like a, uh, a tool. It should be made for this. It's a little wide. Let's try. see the end of it. I was trying to not take out the main board, but I think we're going to have to. Hmm. See something. I'm wondering if we can pop the main board out without going through a uh, a lot of work. These hold it to the DMD board. Hoping we can just kind of pop 
pop the whole thing out, you know. Like this. trying to get to the power supply uh, gotta take the main board out the normal way that's okay though Probably some screws underneath I can't see. Oh yeah, one, two, three. Three screws on the back and then that metal comes out. is almost identical to the uh, other ballast, those uh, 210 watt ones. This 210 also Let's see, output 70 to 120, 260 watt, so it's 260 watt ballast. Okay, let's get those wires out. How is that stuck? How does that come out? Loosen this. Getting there. one down here yeah so this is almost is a spitting image of a uh, GT 1080 that whole series a lot of those all of a sudden it's kind of weird seems to happen that way though mm. oh, there's tape let's get tape let's get this out of the way Hmm. Uh, 
We've got a thermal sensor in there. That's why. Okay. Well, that's all right. Just need to get those wires out of there, and that'll pop through. Then let's get that fan out. I think I dropped a screw and it went inside the fan. One. inside there. All right, so I got it out from underneath here and now it is right there. And then the screw that I dropped right there. Fan's good. If you happen to need a fan for one of these, you can go ahead and pause it right there. It's a, a GB1245PK V is in Victor, X is in X-ray, dash 8, or B, not sure, 8 or B, take your pick. Alright, so that's good, that's cleared out. Let's get back to this. So that's not a ton longer, but definitely longer. So let's see, do I want to splice it? Let's get that uh, outer insulation off since that's not being used on this model. I have uh, shrink tubing that would be fine for splicing these together. I want to get the stuff off. There we go. Oh, come on. We have a wire. Let's pop the uh, connector apart. I save these connectors. You can buy these Mauser. I think it's just a Molex. But I like to uh, save these. Because sometimes they're useful. You know, they're, I don't know, a dollar, dollar fifty maybe a connector, which isn't a lot, but sometimes you can save some people some good money if you uh, keep your scrap parts around. One of the main reasons I like doing this work is because I get to help keep trash out of the ground. My, my personal feeling is, is if I'm putting it in the trash, it's really time for the trash. There we are. This little pin's out, just in case I need to latch it back in. So you can see this one's a lot longer. Let's see, and that'll take us over to here. It's probably a good point for a splice, actually. Yeah, that is a good point for a splice. So what I'll do is let me cut, cut those off. Leave a little bit extra. Oh, let me mark that other wire before I cut it. So the large tab. Large tab, small tab. So I'm going to put the small tab. Large tab is white, small tab has a black mark. So that'll be this wire. There we go.
There's the old one. We might tear that apart once I can uh, get a tool up in there. Maybe this way. See, this is a Molex tool. It's made for Molex pins. It should go up and push on the tab, but it doesn't seem like it. Unless it's on the other side. Let's see. get that connector out. I mean, they feel really jammed in there. <clears throat> I'm just going to call this one good, or, you know, no good, ready for trash. So we're going to splice these together. I have uh, butt crimps that are uninsulated. We'll use those and some solder, and some shrink tubing. There we go. Let me go get all that stuff. All right. So here we go. I have uh, a bunch of these. Uninsulated butt crimps. I like these because we can not have to worry about the stupid insulation that goes on the outside because for this kind of stuff that insulation is kind of useless and in my opinion it gets in the way of the crimp so what we'll do I'm going to put the heat shrink on before I actually do anything but these actually will share the same space see I'll crimp that flow a little solder in and then slide the shrink tubing over and seal it let me go set that shot up okay so there's the connection I have the uh, heat sink in place let's uh, let's hit it with some crimpers just to um, yeah, we'll go from the back side so you guys hopefully can see it. Damn it. Alright, so this one, it's the other black marked wire. We'll slide that in. Let our helping hands help us out. Alright, let me see if I can get this to cramp without anything slipping. Alright, like that. That's good. Now I'm going to rotate it a little because I want to get some solder in the uh, that gap there. what I'm trying to do use a little bit of solder to help get the heat transfer going and then right in like that there we go and now we have solder in there too so it's crunked and soldered focus so that's all full of solder now too then, just take our shrink tubing. Oh, I don't want it to shrink yet. Slide our shrink tubing over. There we 
go. And then I'll just, uh, I don't really need to do it this way, but so that you guys can see it, let's put it there. Set my heat, it'll go to 200. And this is the stuff that has the glue on the inside. So it, uh, it really does work well. What I like to do is just go back and forth until I see glue start to ooze out the ends. There we go. Perfect. That one's done. And now I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to do the other one without narrating it. You can just watch. See, that's all full of solder now. So it's basically crimped just to make a mechanical connection so that I can get it uh, solid enough so that I can dump a bunch of solder in it. Let's see if we can get that over it. Hmm. If I go too fast, I might have, I think I may have caused a problem here. Let me go see if I can clean that up. I'll be right back. All right, we're good to go. Now both those connectors repaired, or, you know, both those splices made. Oop, knocking my helping hands loose. Let's go back over to the projector and install this. So let's put this back in then we'll have to route the wires let me get them straight big tab goes that way little tab goes this way get these two in oh wait a minute that's good guarantee you that connector won't go in there the other way so let's see let's set that in there, roll that over. Get Mr. Screwdriver. All right, and then up there, all the way up. Come on. There we go. Looks good. Good, good, good. Can I put this back in? Yes, I think I can put this back in now. Yep. 
Come on. There we go. Is that too long? Yeah, see, I think this screw might be. Let me see if I have a shorter. This one's just a smidge, just ever so slightly smaller. Yeah, that's the one. There we go. All right, that's in, that's all good. That's gonna go under here. Oh, that's perfect. So our crimp then is protected, it's out of the way. Like that. Here we are, there's our lamp basket. Ready to go. Let's get the projector over here. And see if we can set that lamp basket back in without too much hassle. Let's see if I can just tuck this wheel, color the water out of the way for a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, fan. Fan in there. Yeah, let's see. In my experience, the difficult part is just lining this all back up so it'll drop in the way you want it to. But not too bad so far. this other vent over here. Yeah, that was making it a little harder for everything to drop in. That goes there. This goes here. Like that. It's all down. Let's put the uh, there's special screws for the fans or for the fan. It has um, I'll show you it has a little shoulder. You can see that little shoulder there. That is the part that sits in the rubber and then the threads go into the plastic. That one good and. there and then color wheel wire goes up in that little notch oh, come on get in there Good, good, good. Now we can put the lamp basket screws back in. Right there. That one. And this one. And one more. Right here. Okay, 
then that uh, this thing has to go back in. And this thing, its main job is to block light so that the uh, lamp doesn't have, you know, the, the lamp assembly when it's running doesn't leak a bunch of light out the side. Get a little bit bigger screwdriver. Yeah, so that gets a much better bite. Both of those are back in. That means the basket is now fully installed. We can put the uh, metal plate and uh, the main board and stuff back in next. So we got that, that's good. Door switch, we'll plug that back in. Door switch plugs in. Here, right there, that's the door switch. And everything else is plugged in that needs to be plugged in. Now we just need to get the uh, that metal plate back in. Let me just dress a few of these wires. That'll be good. Oh yeah, that's good. So I can put a few of these initial screws back in that I took out. There's the small ones that are going to go here, but there's some larger ones that help hold all this bracket down. Good. We have here one, two, three, and four. Oops. I think that does it for the short coarse thread. I must say the construction is quite good. It's very solidly built. Dells are definitely made a little bit 
more robustly than some of the uh, normal home use Optimas. I guess since they're going to be potentially used in you know office environments where they might not get the best care, it's probably a good idea. Let's see, and that will go. Yep, that'll get back down there if we need it to. Mr. Mainboard. in that let's get all of our wires clear so nothing gets pinched that's supposed to come out through there there we are right on down put one screw in I'll put the two in that hold it to the DMD assembly because I don't want that to pop up. And then we'll reconnectorize everything and try it. Because we're really at a point where we should be able to test it without any issue. Yeah, it's all good. Speaker, ballast control, fan, yeah, system fan. Lower fan. Take fan, color wheel sensor. That green one is for the uh, for the top IR, so we don't really need to worry about that. So we just tuck that in here. And then color wheel. Probably blocking the camera. That's good. That's going to go there. Oh, this one here too. All right, let's get these wires. I still have everything framed, more or less. All right, that wire and that wire. Good, good, good. Put a few more screws in. Probably just put them all in. Okay, so now I just need to find my, oh, almost forgot, let me put these guys in too. I, this is, well, knock on wood, this should be fine, I won't have to take it apart again. So I am putting all this stuff back in. I'm going to say that my confidence is being bolstered by my experience. It's a little arrogant, but I've, uh, I've had a comeuppance recently enough where I feel like I'll be okay here. So we'll see. And if not, egg on my face. All right, so that's good. Have our case screws left. Let me, I'll have to get a different 
connector. This, uh, that connector's no good. The uh, lamp assembly's okay, but the connector's no good. So let's, let's get that out. Then I'll, let's go get a connector. But let me pop this off. off. All right, let me go get a new wire. Got this to make sure it's the same as all of the other ones. Big tab. Big tab. All right, I'll be right back. Here we go. Here's a good one. No burns. No melts. Just happy. So let's see. This is going to go back in. Let's see if that'll fit down in there. Yeah. This way. Yeah, like that. So let's get big end. Good. Now we'll do the small end. Come on. Get that a little. There we are. All right, now it's ready to try. Unlock it. Set that down. Snug in the uh, lamp screw. Not too tight, just tight enough. down. It's hitting on the connector. Let's get this. Hmm. Nope. All right, let me find uh, something else to hold that. try this again. This usually works. Just have to find the right position. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's get this stuff out of the way. And plug in the keyboard. Power. All right, that will sit there. Good, good, good. All right, and let's get our power cord. Power cord. All right, a standby came on. Did it. Probably turn my uh, power strip on. Yep, there we are. Power strip is on. Let's 
standby is on. There we are. Oop, don't want to do that. There we go. Color wheel, lamp ignited. There we are. We have Dell coming up on the screen. There we are. Focus that a little. Looks good. Yep. Looks very good. Lamp is approaching the end of its useful life. Replacement suggested they haven't reset the lamp timer yet. That's okay. We'll put it back together and then we'll do that. Can I turn it off yet? Not yet. Enter. Thank you. No. Hello. Probably has to warm up to a point. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video here. I'll come back and we're ready to reassemble. All right, it's nice and cool now. Let's get that off. Let's get that unplugged. Let's get our front IR. to bring the uh, focus ring all the way to one side that brings the uh, front of the lens back so it's out of the way What a pain. Hard to get apart, hard to put back together. It's kind of a good thing, I guess. It means it's sturdy. Let's put these in. Have a manufacturing date of November 2016. So this is five years old. Wow. And that connector. Well, who knows? I mean these these old lamps, older, like the original lamps, they can definitely cause problems. You run them too long, they get too hot, that sort of thing. All right, let's get our door. All right, let's try it one more time. And then we'll uh, move it over to the other area. set the lamp timer over there. Looks good. I'm happy. 
We'll get another warning about the lamp, I'm sure. Your lamp time is running out. No, no. Sure. All right, menu. Audio advanced settings. Alright, I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes and then uh, I'm going to shut it down and move it over to the other test area and I'll catch back up with you guys over there.